Hi guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to learn about what is a cursor. Now, this is a pretty important concept because there's a few different types of cursors uh, when you use databases. You've got SQLite cursors and database cursors, so it's important to know the difference between them as well as understand what they're for. So what is a cursor? A cursor is a structure that allows us to traverse a result set. Very esoteric description there, maybe not all that helpful. Database cursors are a thing in databases, in RDBMSs, that we can use to tell the database that we want this result from the database, or this amount of data, but we want to get that data one piece at a time. And so it allows us to, you know, tell the database we want to get this table of data, but only give me the first 100 rows and then we can ask it for the next 100 rows and so on. So it allows us to traverse the results, loading the results as we go along. SQLite cursors, though, are a different thing. In SQLite cursors, we load all the results, but they are there to sort of help us go over them a bit more easily. So this is essentially what a cursor looks like. This is a table that we've loaded using SQLite, and the cursor is the little arrow. So we can use the cursor to sort of go through the results one by one or 10 by 10, however we want, we can sort of go through them like that. Okay? So it's very important to distinguish between database cursors that are things in the RDBMS, which SQLite does not have, or at least we're not going to use them, that allow us to load results bit by bit so that we don't fetch the entire table, which could potentially be millions of rows at once from the database. So there's a difference between that and the SQLite cursor, which is only there to help our code navigate the results. It doesn't do anything to help us, uh, you know, not have to load all the results at once. We're going to understand more about what this means later on when we learn more about database cursors, but for now, just bear with me on this one. So for SQLite cursors, they represent that arrow, that pointer that we saw a moment ago. They help us iterate over the results or go over them one by one. Therefore, using them in for loops like this sort of makes sense when you have a cursor. You get, you know, you create your cursor with connection.cursor, then you use that cursor to execute a query such as cell select. And then you can use the cursor that has loaded that data in a for loop like this. And that gives you each row one by one. So essentially, you can think of this for loop as that arrow that is giving you each row or pointing to each row one at a time. So when we're doing something like this, a select and then an iteration, a cursor makes sense. It's sort of useful. We can iterate over the cursor. We don't have to, you know, uh, do anything else like build a list out of the results or anything like that. So that is interesting. But when we're not iterating over the cursor, such as if we try to do an insert, then SQLite cursors seem kind of pointless, right? Here in this code, we are creating our cursor and then we're executing an insert and we're never iterating over the cursor. So it's this arrow is really not pointing towards anything because an insert query doesn't even return anything useful to us. And so in this case, the cursor does seem a bit pointless. And some people suggest that this is really just a small problem in SQLite, that this cursor shouldn't really exist in all cases. I believe that the reason why we use cursors for both selecting and inserting in SQLite is just for consistency, to make your code more consistent. Every query uses a cursor, and that's it. Uh, otherwise, you'd need some queries using a cursor, some not using a cursor. It could be a bit confusing, especially for new coders. So this is just the way it's done in SQLite. However, you may have noticed earlier on in a previous presentation that we didn't use a cursor. And that's because when we do connection.execute, that creates a cursor for us and that saves us some typing and it makes a bit more sense when doing things like inserting. We've seen this earlier on. Here, for example, we're not creating a cursor with connection.cursor. We're just doing connection.execute and SQLite behind the scenes automatically creates a cursor for us and executes the query using that cursor, but we don't have to do that ourselves. And again, it makes a bit more sense when doing things like create table or inserting data. You can create the cursor yourself, and I would normally recommend doing that so it's a bit clearer when you want to use the cursor. And when you don't want to use the cursor, I would normally recommend you do this so that it's a bit clearer that you're not getting a cursor that is not going to be used. 
All right, so I hope this helps understand what cursors are for and gives you a little bit of information. It's not going to be uh, obvious until you start using them a bit more, but I hope this helps, and let's go and write some of this code in the next video. I'll see you there.